So just one second and we're off and running. All right, and welcome tonight. It is me, Daniel Griffin, and my lovely co-host, Thais Fournier. Some of you might know her from the Natural Resources Department. She is the island's <laughs> water resource specialist. And tonight, we got a twofer. We got the air fryer. We're going to do a little do's and don'ts, some basics on the air fryer. And then we have a bonus with the Instapot. We're going to do a cornbread. And in the air fryer, we're going to do fried chicken. Pretty basic, straightforward, and we'll get off and running. With that, we will shift into the cornbread first. Yeah. So we wanted to use two of the items that uh, we had. They were actually gifts when we moved to the island. So thanks to uh, my family who did this, which is really great. But I, people that I've talked to, at least with the Instapot, usually tell me that they have one, but they don't really know how to use it, or it's like on their shelf collecting dust. So we wanted to utilize kind of like the little gadgets that we do have. So if someone's interested in purchasing one or purchasing an air fryer, um, we recommend it. Not a sponsored video, but this thing has replaced our oven. So um, Daniel will talk more about the great benefits of having an air fryer, but I like the Instapot. Uh, sometimes it cuts time. Um, other times, like this cornbread, for instance, it will it'll probably take about an hour or so to cook. But I, it's really easy. I kind of like that I can just put it in there. I haven't figured out if we're actually saving electricity versus using our electric stove um, versus the Instapot. I have to look that up. But I just like that I can put it leave it and don't need to worry about it. It shuts off on itself. So let's get started. So for the cornbread, um, we're gonna use a seven by three inch cake pan. So you when you get an Instapot, um, depending on what kind that you have, I don't know if you can see this, but you just wanna make sure that the pans that you use can actually fit inside. Um, Instapot <laughs> does sell pans. Uh, was there a question? No. Oh, sorry. Just my audio. Um, but this one, I think I got to just stop and shop. Um, and you can actually make a cheesecake in the Instapot. I haven't tried that yet, but I'd like to. So what we're going to do is we're going to do um, crack an egg first. Daniel, if you don't mind. So this recipe is pretty easy. Um, so we're going to do one egg. We're going to do a cup of buttermilk. I'm sure most of you know this, but I wouldn't waste the money on um, actually buying buttermilk at the store. Sometimes it's hard to find. Uh, if you have distilled vinegar or lemon, it's for one cup of milk. You can just do a tablespoon of lemon juice and just mix it and let it sit for a few minutes. And uh, that will curdle your milk and it'll become buttermilk. Or if some of you have expired milk, you can use that too. That will actually serve as your buttermilk and um, taste fine. So I'm going to actually do a uh, It tastes more food. than fine. It tastes great. It does taste great. I don't like the word fine. Daniel likes to use that <laughs> a lot. When I'm like, how's my dinner? He's like, fine. No one wants to hear that. Am I right? So, so we'll mix that. And then we'll just let that sit. And then we're gonna do uh, two thirds cup of sugar. Um, you can do more or less depending on how uh, sweet you like your cornbread. Um, we did this kind of recipe since Daniel's from Arkansas in the South and we were doing a healthier version of our fried foods, hence using that. The cornbread does get sugar, but I like a sweeter, more moist cornbread. So Daniel, if you want to mix this for me, mm -hmm. we're alternating being each other's assistants. So I got the cornbread, but we're going to leave the Southern man to do the fried chicken. Daniel, what's your favorite thing about working for the Athenaeum? Pressure's the people, on. <laughs> the people, that's easy. But the people that you work with or the people that come and visit? The community, of course. Oh, that's a good answer. Good answer, Daniel. And next, we're going to do a, a cup of flour, just regular all-purpose flour. And 
pour that in, Daniel. Thank you. And after that, we're going to do um, a cup of the yellow cornmeal. I got this at Stop and Shop. They also have, um, this is the recipe that I'm using, I got offline, but they also have a great recipe on the back. Um, this is Indian head, old fashioned stone ground yellow cornmeal. He makes it, so you should be good. We're gonna add the milk to that too. All right, so this should be curdled a little bit. He makes it. This is what happens when you do this on a limb. Yeah, do that. This will be good practice with both of us in the kitchen because I feel like when we're both in here, we tend to be like, I got it, which I'm going to do to Daniel right now. Okay. So this is what happens in relationships. <laughs> All right. So we're going to put the rest of that in. You're going to add a little bit of salt. Daniel, if you give me a couple pinches in there. And we're going to add a uh, cup of the cornmeal. Keep going. There we go. And then we're going to do one third cup of vegetable oil. We have canola oil. And Daniel asked me to do this. I was like, I don't know. I'm not the uh, not the best cook, but. <laughs> figure to try my hand at this but this is what happens i'm like ah we don't have this we don't have buttermilk let's see what i got in the fridge and we'll make do but i feel like that's a lot of people when it comes to cooking if you're pretty busy or if you got a family no one has time to just kind of drop and get a small ingredient so that'll be fine just mix that and then we're also going to do um a little bit of uh baking soda Do you ever flavor your cornbread? I don't. I am, again, uh, I wish I was more of an exotic cook. I feel like <laughs> Daniel likes to say that I try a lot of different things that don't pan out well. Uh, <laughs> ambitious. <laughs> ambitious, thank you. <laughs> but Daniel, uh, he'll eat, I think, what is the last thing I made him? I made him, oh, I made uh, vegan tofu chicken nuggets <laughs> and uh yeah that didn't go well and I'm, then... <laughs> not a, I'm not a substitute person i just assume not eat it i'm gonna substitute we it. were trying to be be healthier and your answer to cornbread you really don't church up cornbread the only thing they're gonna do is jalapenos you might see people throw granulated sausage in there every now and then or cheese or cheese, that's what I was going to say. You don't like cheese? Yeah, cheesy mm. cornbread. But I don't know. Dan, I mean, mm. maybe this is just Arkansas. No. Uh, standard. <laughs> I, love, I love jalapeno cheesy cornbread, but I also made a vegan meatloaf. That didn't come out well either. So <laughs> anyway, I'm glad everyone tuned in for this meal. <laughs> I hope we're at least providing some kind of entertainment. That's for one great. tablespoon of um, a baking powder. <laughs> Yeah, it will settle. And I also, when I'm baking too, and I'm like, hmm, this looks a little liquidy. So I'm going to add a little more cornbread. It's going to, this is going to be like a dense Good. cornbread, but that's how I like it. Let's see. So we're going to do is just, this is a coconut oil. You can use any kind of spray, but I'm just going to spray the pan. A little go over. So we're gonna pour this in the pan, and what you're gonna do after that is you're gonna put, you're gonna cover your pan with um, a aluminum piece of foil. You're also going to cover the bottom of the pan with foil as well to kind of insulate it. And before you place it in your instant pot, I went ahead um, and just poured a, a cup of water. You're gonna put that. Pour that right in the Instapot. I also have a little 
the culture back place. This comes with the Instant Pot, so that's already in there, but you can buy attachments and whatnot. You can pop that right in. So we're gonna pour this in. Perfect. Thanks, Daniel. Cover it. So it's sort of, you're sort of steaming it more than yeah. baking, right? Yeah. We're going to seal. What we're going to do is when we put this in, we're going to um, put the, uh, the function towards sealing. So it's going to build up to pressure. And then it should be in there for about uh, 55 minutes. And so you're going to um, let it natural release. So don't touch, don't touch to release the pressure for 10 minutes. And then after 10 minutes have, has gone by, you can just slide it to uh, the release um, function and mm -hmm. it will release the rest of the pressure. And it's really hot when it comes out. So I wouldn't immediately remove it. Two types of releases on the Instant Pot. There's instant release, which is when it's done, you flip it and it explodes steam everywhere. And there's what they call the natural release. You use it more than you think, and you just let it sit there for 10 minutes, and then you flip over the, the valve. All right. So I'm going to place this right in. It might be a little tight with the foil, but it does fit, so you just kind of like push it down. Okay. Yeah. Okay. As I just said, it will it will go down. Now it's stuck. Yeah, thanks. Just a little set all the way down and it'll situate. We're coming for the extra pressure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so again, I mean, working with the Instapot, there's a lot of different recipes. Same with the air fryer, which Daniel will go over. Um, you kind of experiment. It, it's one recipe might work and another might not. So it's kind of just having fun with it. But I, I've that's what cooking is all about. Um, I know I have a uh, sister-in-law who is a, a pastry chef, and so she would die if she heard me say that because everything obviously has to be uh, precise <laughs> and exact for for baking. Um, but I like the Instant Pot. You can bake in here. I bake cakes, cornbread, cheesecakes. So what we're gonna do is just we're gonna turn it on. We're gonna press. Um, this is the Lux version that we have, but you just press the manual button and it already has 55 minutes on it because I cooked one yesterday. And you just make sure it's on the sealing position and it's ready to go. You can leave it and get cornbread in about an hour, so. Yeah, I do want to highlight, especially for the island with the type of housing that we have, oh, whether yeah. or not you rent your property or you are a rent tour. Sometimes the kitchens can be kitchenettes. And so in terms of subsidizing a kitchen, an Instapot and an air fryer can go a long ways with fulfilling your tenants' needs. Absolutely. So now that we've got that going, Instapot, like Tayi said, once you, if you step to the side, Tayi's, when it gets to that on setting, it's fully functioning. Yeah, it's it, building up the pressure. So the time hasn't started just yet. And when it builds that pressure, the clock will come on. And so we're going to shift to the air fryer. Okay, you can see it. It's a little dark, but you can see it in the picture. Um, our for air fryer is a little intense. It's not typically what you see on the market. The popular one is it's, it's black. It's kind of plastic looking. It has a bottom drawer that you sh uh, push into the unit. Ours is more a, a air fryer slash toaster oven. So, voila. Glass room doors, <laughs> they open. Now, a couple of features. As I said, I'll explain the accessories in a moment. Air fryer and oven. So, it has an air fryer function and an oven function. So, you can bake and broil. And now, an added bonus with this model, you can't see it here, but there are two notches on either side for rotisserie. And it does pretty well for rotisserie. I did a full duck 
not too long ago, and it turned out pretty well. And so the air fryer is going to come. This is your standard. It's just a basket. This is what you're mostly going to use for air frying. Your drip pan slash uh, baking sheet. And then there's a couple other accessories as well. Um, there is a this is for baking steak well. pan, also a baking sheet. We swear this is a cooking show, not the sponsorship, but we just have to is, show you uh, all this for bacon. Bacon. And other, you can dehydrate as well. So if you do jerky. Yeah. How is it to clean? That's actually the bacon is a, is kind of because you're getting again I guess less fat because sometimes when you're with the bacon at least you're putting it on a paper towel. For here it kind of is great because it all drains and so you're getting like however well, crispy that you want. But then cleaning the bottom part is uh. It goes like this. But it, it's not bad. It's like so the bacon. And then, so this is perforated, and so the grease goes into the pan from the whole. Right. Um, we use it a lot, and so cleaning can be tedious because it does have a lot going on in there in terms of grease. And just so that's the, for like bacon, but honestly, like we probably, if you're using it every day, I'd probably just clean it. You could clean it after each use, but I don't know. It wipes down quick. Yeah, it's it's small. That'd probably be the only thing because obviously the oven you're not cleaning after each use. Um, but yeah, they all have different kinds of air fryers. This one's the caloric or caloric. Um, and so sometimes the glass doors will get a little bit of splatter. But I like that because you can actually see your food while it's cooking. A lot of the air fryers, you can't visually see it. And so for me, I like to see what my product is looking like as it cooks. So I'm not burning it. But that's for me. Um, so walking through this real quick, you're not going to be able to see too much. The buttons are small, but it's just like any other appliance that you're used to using. You have an air fryer, an oven button, start, stop. You have a button for the rotisserie to engage the spinners and then a light. And so the main thing with the air fryer that you're going to learn if you get one, it's the learning curve on your ratio, your time and temperature. It cooks hot and fast. I haven't found a recipe yet that has told me the correct time and temperature. Mm -hmm. You just got to kind of always go lower on your temperature and watch it and just gauge by looking when to flip and cut it in half or rotating for either side. And so what's important with an air fryer for this model this glass door is labeled, and that's in terms of depth. So the blowers on top, depending on what you're cooking, is going to be your level for what you put in there. Basic air frying is going to be about mid. If you're doing something thicker, like a steak that has more of a scorching premise to it, you're going to raise it up higher, closer to that blower. All the baking's done more towards the bottom. And the air fryer itself is leveled off inside. And again, that's just something you learn as you go. And it is pre-programmed with all kinds of settings, basic air fry, there's chicken, ribs, shrimp, steak, and then under baking, you do broil, pastries, pizza. All those programs are preset ratios of temperature and time. Again, they're usually off, so I don't mess with them. And with that, okay. We'll get into it. So I am going to do some quick chicken wings. Now this is a pretty basic rudimentary fried chicken. Gotta raise our sleeves for this recipe. So first, you'll just grab your chicken. Don't be shy about it. You do want to take it out, wash it, pat it down, dry it, let it sit for a little bit. Anytime you're frying, a lot of times when you're dealing with meat, you want to let that water dehydrate out of there. So I'm just going to do about four. I'm a flats guy, so I'll do more flats. Yes, that's a Daniel thing. has a whole skill on how to eat flats. I, as a New Englander, that was the first 
works for me. I don't know if anyone else. No, that's a thing. Um, <laughs> I have people. You gotta save it for that later. I have people in my life that order only flats. They only eat flats. But you literally can just, Daniel can just pop one in the mouth and just eat it. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and remove the bone just, just clean. For me, I'm like trying to get the meat off of it. It's, wings are a messy process for me, but. So what I'm doing now is I'm just sprinkling the wings with your uh, seasoning. And I'm going to go into that. Listen, you can get pretty creative on the seasoning. Staples, Italian's always a base, onion powder, garlic powder, paprika, pepper, and of course salt. The ratio for each is usually a tablespoon to a tablespoon and a half. I just eyeball it and I know what flavor ratios I like and you just kind of go from there. Um, I wouldn't go over two tablespoons of any one and I wouldn't go below a tablespoon on any given one and feel free to add others. Like I added a little bit of a Cajun seasoning with the cavenders in this. I just like that flair to it. And so you sprinkle the seasoning on the dry chicken, again, dry. And then... Now, why do you do this uh, before This is just a good flour. seasoning onto the meat below the base level of the flour. Um, so that's yeah. some good, good flavored fried chicken. Nothing, if you don't have a good batter, uh, that's, that's a problem trick you do want to add a little bit of oil i just use you can use olive oil you can use coconut oil i'm as she has highlighted a country boy i just use oil i don't I just we didn't have oil. any crisco <laughs> <laughs> and so just i mean just enough to coat nothing crazy and you don't need to do this step it just makes it a little bit crispier in the air fryer but if you're trying to make a healthier version then I would just avoid this and you, I mean, I've done it. We've done it both ways and it's come out crispy either way, so. For me, it's not so much about health. It's about the pain of frying on a stove top and the cleanup. And so that's where an air fryer can really come in. And so it's just tossed and you know, I mean, you can let that sit for a little bit, but it's not crucial. You're not like on a marinated or anything like that. And so the next step, let me wash my hands real quick. So the key for, Daniel will talk about this too, but while he is um, washing his hands, um, this is self-rising flour. So um, this is great for giving it like a more, more crisp to your chicken. And also we got this at Stop and Shop. You can, it's any pretty grocery store. So flour. The key technique, you can do it in a bowl and just drop your chicken into a bowl, but you're, um, you're gonna get clots all over your hand of the flour from yeah. the oil and stuff like that. So anybody you see worth their salt making fried chicken either has a plastic gallon bag, you'll either see them use a paper sack or something like that to shake. And so- um, We got a reusable silicone bag because we're eco-friendly. That's how we do. <laughs> And so the powder ratio is just, what was the ratio? So we're going to do we'll send the recipe. one, one uh, cup self-rising, a quarter cup corn, no, yeah, cornstarch. And then what you want to do with the flour and not to forget. So you have your extra seasoning that you had in here before that Daniel. Yeah, you chicken. have your self-rising one cup, your cornstarch, quarter cup. And then just dump your seasoning in there. If you haven't put your chicken in there yet, of course, go ahead and just kind of taste the flour because that's what your chicken is going to taste like. So you can just kind of. It's like a shake and bake. It's exactly. I use, I, like, I use that growing up. <laughs> I have a plate. Mm -hmm. All right. Now. Take one of your pieces of meat, just drop it in. It's real easy. And just go crazy. And make it a workout. That's why Daniel has these big biceps. Fried chicken. <laughs> For fried chicken. 
And so you do want to pat off any excess flour. This is just pretty basic. And then I'll keep the other pieces moving here. Uh, yes, please. So I'm going to crack uh, two eggs in here. So we're going to do that double coat, right? Yeah. Yeah. So she's going to do two eggs, two tablespoons of milk. The air fryer, you actually don't, you know, everyone likes triple coated fried chicken, but it's obviously not going to be the same as if you were using it. Yeah, it's not the. So you want to actually go lighter with the flour because um, it it kind of will like break off and flake in the air fryer. So you, you want to do like a light, like the shake is good, but make sure you're not like a clumps of flour. Well, the issue is with an air fryer frying, it's air. And so with powder and air, and it gets you'll, all over the place. <laughs> you'll see in our next steps, it, um, it'll it turn out floury. Yeah, two tablespoons of milk. And then it is one tablespoon hot sauce. What's everyone's favorite hot sauce? This is like a staple. I also get insulted because when I cook a meal, before Daniel even tries it, all of Louisiana hot sauce goes on top of the meal. <laughs> Which is hidden at Stop and Shop on the bottom shelf all the way in the back. <laughs> uh, I love sriracha and uh, I like Frank's. Frank's is my, but Daniel's Louisiana again. Southern. Yeah, I like so. Tabasco. I don't know why, I just like, um, I like Tabasco. I do like sriracha. Ooh, See, Tabasco, so I feel is, like it's just, it's just hot. It just burns your tongue. Yeah, I love it. Tabasco <laughs> is a profiler word. <laughs> and I, <laughs> I also like, what's the other one? Cholula with the wooden. Yeah, Cholula's fine like Cholula. for um, certain types of foods. Um, if you really want to impress somebody from down south, you have a bottle of crystal on your table. You can't get that up here. Crystal what? hot sauce? Yeah. What's the emblem? Quiz. It's just a white label. Oh, yeah. And so, double check real quick. Eggs, hot sauce, nail Oh, and you need a quarter cup water if you did not get that. All right. How are we doing on time? We're good. Kind of lost track. We're great. We're just at 7.30. And if anyone's interested, I put links to the recipes in the chat. Um, Jerry, add the water. Quarter cup. Quarter cup. See, cooking is way easier than baking. Just eyeball stuff, and if you're over or under, it's, it's all right. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't go with my Daniel kind of vetoed me. We discussed this with, <laughs> if you remember Janet. I originally wanted to make a uh, avocado cashew vegan key lime pie <laughs> and Daniel was like no <laughs> but I did make it successfully once and although it's not like a real key lime pie I just like trying to make a healthier version of uh, my favorite desserts but well, Daniel last last week I made the um it's vegan um like quote-unquote cheesecake oh oh with cat so, so you soak the cashews, the cashews. yeah 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 it's not bad, right? No, it's not bad. It doesn't taste like cheesecake. Of course not. But I mean, and it's also really, I don't think you're saving yourself any calories, but that's a lot of nuts to be. <laughs> yeah, but you know, it's all protein though. Like, so yeah. there's sugar, there's no. Exactly. Sorry, continue. So this is the fry <laughs> basket. Always spray down your fry, fry basket with oil. Non-stick spray, whatever you got. Just give it a little, little pre-coat on it. Okay. So now we're going to do our second coating. Right. So you did the flour. Now you, you told me earlier that you want to let it rest. We're not going to do it for this. I think it'll still fry just fine. Resting at this stage is important, but not crucial. The next stage. So you want it to like absorb. Yeah, it gets a little bit more important. So you just into the egg, 
Nothing crazy. Just dunk it. Come closer. Put it back in the bag. Make sure you get the excess off. Yeah. The bag method is before when I made this, I didn't use it. And yeah, you're just constantly washing your hands, but this is like way more fun. You know what I mean? Fun to do with your kids, family. Yeah, it's funny. And so you can kind of see what I've rigged up here because it is a basket and it will fall through. Yeah, so you, that's another thing we made a mistake of is just all of the flour dripping. You just forget. Okay, and we're just going to continue the process, keeping it going, get the excess off. We do not want that. Mm, bad mixing on my part. What are you looking forward to when the Athenaeum actually opens? Um, the people. Yeah. All right. I'm going to keep that moving. I'm going to put the other one right over here. So we only did four of these. You also don't want to crowd um, your food in the air fryer because you want that air flow to get around and crisp it pretty well. So if you overcrowd and try to pack in your chick wings, for instance, uh, you're not going to get a nice crispy uh, fry. So you can put more than four. Uh, we're just doing this just in the interest of time. All right. Now Daniel's gonna show you kind of the final step of coating these guys. You can do it in two ways. You can actually uh, kind of brush the oil on or spray, which would you be a little more, I guess, healthier or less oil use. So this is the stage you do. You kind of like to let them rest. 10 minutes is fine. But for our sake tonight, we're going to keep it moving. Um, that's just for the uh, flour to adhere to the meat a little bit better. So crucial with the air fryer. If you stuck this in the air fryer as is, oh, yeah. it would come out powdery. So you have to get some type of oil on it. You gotta wet it. And you're gonna wet it with oil naturally because you are cooking. And so we have a coconut oil spray that you can use, which is fine. Or you can just brush it on with oil that I have over there. Um, I am going to brush. Just brush an oil. And it's pretty much just like painting. And throw it on there. See, I personally like to spray because it's just faster. Again, um, when I got this air fryer, I was like, I want fried chicken fast or I want food fast. And the great thing about that is you don't have to preheat it too. Um, or they say you could do like five minutes, but I've honestly put, put food in there cold and it's been fine. So, so we're just going to keep doing that. So you want to make sure that there's no white spots uh you so you want to get a nice coating of of oil on that sure. all right take your time with this see daniel daniel's from the south he's like take your time go slow and i'm obviously from massachusetts i'm like ain't nobody got time for this <laughs> but we even ourselves out <laughs> I really want to get those powder spots, those craters and crevices, because it will, it will come out powdery and it's not good. Daniel, when he first tried to use the spray, this also is a trick too. Sometimes, again, depending on what, we've tried a lot of different recipes for air fryer chicken. Um, and I think that's why he doesn't normally like to use the spray because it can blow some of the flour off. But I've never, for myself personally, I've never had that issue. Um, so now we got one side coated. So you're gonna flip it over. Right into the other side, make sure we got some oil on that. 
What other meats have you fried? Oh, we didn't fry. Well, actually, we air fried our steaks. So what you do with that is you put it on. Um, for this one, they have different like levels where you can place it. So you put it on the closest uh, to the top of the heat source. And you layer the steaks with um, a fat, so uh, mayonnaise, for instance. And God, I don't even know how long it took. It was very quick, and it gave it a nice, like, crisp edge for your steak. And then was like, you know, however you liked it cooked. Um, so we've done that. I again, I know I'm talking about my vegan dishes, but I tried to make tofu jerky. I'm sure if I actually had real meat, I haven't tried that yet. Uh, <laughs> To make jerky it would come out a little bit better. Um, what else have we put in there? We've had burgers. Uh, we always use the air fry option. It's just a, just a quicker oven. Um, baking, I've baked stuff in the air fryer. Um, again, baking times are, you just have to watch it and constantly, um, constantly check, check on it. So I think that's probably the downside to having it, but once you kind of play around with it and, and explore different uh, desserts or meals, it, it, gets, it gets easier and I really like it. I think it's a little bit healthier. Um, and yeah, like Daniel said, you don't have to be on the stove with hot oil splashing everywhere. Yeah, if you're using the air fryer for a health alternative, you would have used the coconut oil spray and yeah. stuff like that. Me, I'm not so much worried about that. And so, very simple, just take it and slide it in. That's one of its design flaws is the dripping from the basket. We haven't really. <laughs> so we usually just carry a plate over to it. <laughs> figured that out yet. Um, of note, with this design with the French doors, there's a seam. Anything up front, close to that seam where the doors connect, it's not going to cook as well. Heat escapes. And so you want things to be towards the back. And or you can just alternate it as well. And that's just for this design. So it's straight, straightforward. It's on air fry. We come up here for our time. For this, we're going to do 14 minutes. At 350. I believe she says 18 minutes in the recipe. It's up to you. Again, we like to watch it. That's why we like this air fryer in general. Um, because you can kind of just like peek in and watch as it as it crisps. So so what's gonna happen now? You have your fan up top and it's blowing and circulating throughout the whole chamber, and it'll start bubbling, start cooking relatively fast and what I do I just cut the time in half that's when I flip sorry I'm out of camera that's when I flip is I cut the time in half and so, yeah. so, so you want to be gentle with it because you don't want to lose all of the because it, it is a little fragile in the air fryer they're not as, as sturdy um so you do want to be careful when you flip it but you want to make sure you always obviously flip the thing that you're frying so it's crispy on both sides. And with the miracles of technology, <laughs> we are we so awesome. done. <laughs> and so it's not bad. No, I feel like for air fried chicken, that's great. This is not doing it justice. What? Don't <laughs> judge the cornbread. Usually it's a, uh, this one came out a little more dry than I had liked, but. This is what Daniel gets for asking me to join him on Yummy Monday, so. <laughs> no, that's great. It looks yeah. great. And I never thought of using self-rising flour. Yeah. yeah. And it just makes it a little like crispier, like a little fluffier. Yeah. So obviously fried chicken doesn't, for a crisp, doesn't keep later on like the next day. So you want to serve it immediately. But the good thing too is we've had actually leftovers that we just kind of put back in the air fryer. What the air fryer was made for is for people who enjoy frozen foods, particularly the battered frozen foods. So like mozzarella sticks. Um, I don't know if those ravioli's. made for those people, but. 
<laughs> yeah, it, well, those the thing benefit. is, <laughs> is you can just throw those in an air fryer and push start, and they come out really like well. restaurants. Yeah. <laughs> That's what they are yeah. for. I, I feel like. Yeah. And I have friends that have uh, children or like teens. It's just really easy for them to like pop it in, fast snacks. Um, yeah. I don't know if we can, do you want to, well, that might make everyone nauseous if we actually move the camera to the air fryer, but it's kind of fun to watch. Watch it, you know. Yeah. Bring us in. We want to yeah. see it. Bring it in, Daniel. Yeah, so you saw it in powder form and how we had it when we were brushing it. And already after two minutes, can you see Janet? Yeah. Yeah, we can see. After two minutes, it's already starting to, and you'll start to see it um, bubble mm -hmm. and get pretty hot. Now, I will, when you go to flip, so when you go to pull that drawer out, to flip or just remove the food when you're done that basket is hot i have a couple of scars on my hand yeah make sure you actually have uh some protectant on your hand because you do you do forget it kind of just yeah you think it's like a microwave and you open it and then you will won't make that mistake again <laughs> so. and like i said i've done a Full duck. I bought it at the meat market here in town, the D'Artagnan brand. I dressed it up, stuffed it accordingly. It's like a Peking duck. And it's delicious. Yeah. And yeah, there's a rotisserie option. And it took probably rotated. an hour. Yeah. I didn't try this either, too, but um, I don't know if anyone gets those uh, savor or savory magazines from Stop and Shop, those recipes. A lot of those. Um, recipes actually incorporate the instant pot and the um, air fryer so i think those are just two trending kitchen items that we wanted to showcase and one of the i haven't tried this yet but i'm going to because i just picked up the recipe book was an instant pot rotisserie chicken so you can just sh shove a whole chicken in there <laughs> and let it go and then you have a beautiful rotisserie chicken so um, again, easy cleanup. I like things that are easy, that are fast uh, for me, and that are uh, a little healthier. And so, going back to the instant pot, it's just this does get hot up top, as I just discovered. Uh, <laughs> See it was on about? 55 minutes, it's down to 34. Mm -hmm. When that counts down to zero, it'll come up with an L and then it'll start counting back up. And you wait till that gets to 10 minutes and then you flip your valve up top. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Yeah. I like that your air fryer has the feature of the window because we have the one we have, we have an air fryer attachment for our instant pot and you can't really see what's going on in there. So the only thing I think we've air fried so far is um, cauliflower. Ooh. It was delicious, um, but you kind of have to keep checking it. And you kind of like keep pulling the lid off so it's it's not um, set it and forget it. You really have to keep an eye on it yeah. and you can't even peek in. But, um, but I'm excited to try a duck because I can get yeah. it. It's really good with vegetables. I've done cauliflower, Brussels sprouts. We use it a lot. I Fries. It probably cut down my oven use in half. Mm -hmm. um, it's just so quick and easy, yeah. especially with things like vegetables. You just cut them up, throw them in that basket, and they're... Yeah, then you can put stuff on the bottom, uh, you know, because you have multiple trays, so you could be air frying stuff on. Ooh, that's hot too, see? You can be <laughs> air frying <laughs> a basket of stuff and then put some vegetables that, you know, won't take that long on the bottom, and then you get... Well, it's good about not overcooking the vegetables. Mm -hmm. they, it keeps that crisp. Yeah. I love crispy Brussels sprouts that... Mm -hmm. I've done clothes, but yet to replicate the restaurant kind that are just covered in some delicious jam. Do you need to tell me? Yeah, but I love the idea because there's things I like fried, but you're right, like boiling a whole bunch of oil is like so oh, yeah. messy. And how do you get rid of it? And it's so wasteful. And yeah. Um yeah. A I lot don't of times you can I mean you can if you're frying a lot, you can usually just let the oil cool put it in a glass jar to like reuse again. But I mean, depending on what you cook, like we had fried 
fish cakes and then that oil was just like fishy <laughs> so that wasn't good for like using it again for something else um so oh yeah here we'll bring you in another a little bit closer so now we're flipping you just open it up kind of bring this out to catch and pull this and you can already see that this batch is doing all right it's not as good as my first go it is delicate so you just wanna yeah and it's not sticking really no that's why daniel sprayed it beforehand uh too with that coconut oil but sometimes see it right there you do lose some so yeah it's just name of the game it's inevitable but i wasn't making really fried chicken before i got this so <laughs> And then just a little back in. At least for me, I'm sure a lot of people watching might be shaking their heads at this fried chicken recipe, but <laughs> for for me who uh, doesn't ever make fried chicken, um, I really like the air fryer and I like doing it in there. Um, it, was, it was easy for me and yeah, didn't have to worry about oil splattering everywhere and stuff like that, but yeah. So I'm excited to hear if anyone has like their experiences with fried chicken or they can definitely tell me how to do a safe and successful batch actually on the stove. And then I get Daniel's Southern fried chicken approval. <laughs> Other than that, that's your air fryer. That's another go around with the Instant Pot. And it's a good way to subsidize your kitchen and in this time of quarantine to experiment yeah absolutely yeah actually i'm gonna look up does it, if anyone has any questions they can unmute themselves and ask i'm sure thais and daniel would be happy to answer your questions and i was actually going to look for your original instant pot class it's in here somewhere oh yeah daniel did that he did it like a was it chicken tagine something like that usually it's lamb but it's a chicken Oh, you know what? Maybe we never recorded it. Is that possible? Probably for the best. I just want to know if people use as much hot sauce as we use for like everyday things, every meal. I haven't in a while. I have a question. Sure. I have a hair fryer, but not the kind you have. One of those, like the round ones. Uh huh. Can I do? I just has a tray basket. Can I do the chicken just as? Um, oh, you do it in it. Oh, absolutely. This the recipe that because I was looking up uh, fried chicken recipes with the air fryer. The original recipe, which is in the link that Janet provided, she uses the original one that's kind of the black one that I think it's plastic, but you can open it, it's got a tray. Yes. You put, yes, so that's yeah. where the recipes come from. So she used oh, okay. it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I, I do use that a lot of is, stuff. That version is pretty standard. I think it's the first one or the most popular one. Yeah. Okay. And I love to use a lot of hot sauce too, so. I want to come over for your fried chicken. <laughs> When you make it, and then we can compare it. Into, we can compare our fr our air fryer recipes. <laughs> oh, okay. What kind of hot sauce do you use? Just say no to Tabasco. <laughs> I I am a Jamaican, so they at the shop and shop they have this Jamaican hot sauce, hot pepper sauce. Oh, what kind? Wait, I will buy this because I'm. It's I need in to the, buy the hot it's sauce. in the international aisle. And it's just okay. A, what's the name of it? It's um Grace hot sauce. Oh. on it because I like trying different kinds <laughs> to explore but Daniel's trad and true to his Louisiana that's good this with tartar sauce and you'll never go back on your fish oh yeah he puts on everything I also <laughs> love to use the sriracha sauce too yeah yeah it's a so, good I like it's got to be Thai food with sriracha nah. it's got to be I put Thai on my food. eggs I put on everything no 
we put hot sauce on literally everything. <laughs> I don't know if anyone remembers that Beyonce song where she was like, I got hot sauce in my bag swag. <laughs> no, I have friends, they have a, it's a little bottle and it's a keychain and they carry it around. <laughs> I think I had one student that was like that. Yeah, so those guys are, we can put it on a different plate. Yeah, they're done. Have you um have you done fish in it? Like I would love to do like fish and chips. Yeah, we actually we we I cheated and I bought um oh where is it? I I actually bought like a, a fish fry from Stop and Shop uh and we did fish and chips, which actually came out really great. Uh fish is really easy in there too. Um and even just I tend to when I cook chicken sometimes in the oven, it's just dry. When I've just made chicken breasts in there with the air fryer, um, it has come out really tender and really moist, uh, especially if you're having like a higher fat content too. So I've had chicken thighs in there. I don't know if you can see. My first okay. batch was better. Great. This one's a little bit, uh, it it's hard to right. see on camera, but the- Oh yeah, a little bit of the, the batter yeah. came off. Well, it's not so much it comes off, it can be a little dry mm -hmm. because it's just air blasted. Mm -hmm. And so it's tricky. You'll figure out your ratios. The more you do it, the better you do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I feel like for like when you when you think of fried chicken for an air fryer, like I was actually Me, pleasantly just, surprised. <laughs> I get tired of the iron skillet full of oil. And then like what do I do with the oil? Yeah, it's a Janet stuff. Yeah. And being on the island, we are more responsible with our waste and, you know, it's just like a next step I have to take, which, you know, how long did that take us? Our 30 minute conversation and it's ready to go. Yeah. Now those were just wings. Wings naturally are going to cook faster. Um, Maybe we should try yeah. whole chicken. Ten tenders do really well. I bet, I mean, I'm sure there are recipes for frying like a whole chicken in there, just like we did, like you did yeah. the duck, yeah. Yeah, you can do <laughs> so, rotisserie too. Maybe you gotta, I, yeah. I wondered how long does it take for chicken breasts? Oh, uh, every recipe is different. That's the hard part. They, it does, the, each, I don't know if the other, other models of the air fryer come with recipe books, but ours came with a recipe book. So I think it was, Oh, I can't even remember. Like not... any standard chicken breast out of the package? Yes. Mm -hmm. 10 minutes? 10 minutes tops. Yeah. 10 minutes oh. is going to cook with the air fryer because all the presets. Again, you don't have to preheat. I never preheat this. Yeah. And I just put it right. in there. No, this, there's, no, there's no preheating with this. Yeah. You but can. all the presets are way up in the 400s in terms of temperature. I drop it down into like 380, 350, yeah. and it's still, it's going to cook that chicken fast. Yeah. We had a couple of flops, so that's, you know, you just. And you kind of, I call it the reflection principle, um, refraction, I should say. Like with bacon, when bacon looks like it's getting done, it's done because it's going to keep cooking. Same mm -hmm. thing with the chicken in the air fryer. If you wait until it starts to look brown, it's going to be dry. Okay, do you leave the skin on or take the skin off? I made it with, with skinless yeah. and it's been moist and great. Okay. Um, yeah. The chicken thighs, actually the chicken thighs I made too uh, were uh, skinless mm -hmm. and they also were very moist and tender and great. But if you feel like me and you like skin, it handles the skin well. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like the, Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I, th I thank you so much. I'm on another island. I'm on oh, island in South Carolina. So it was so good to get to join your Zoom today. Pam, oh, from South Carolina, what hot sauce do you use? Uh, I use this. Whoa. Here. Cholula, oh, Cholula. yes. <laughs> I like Cholula. It is a good one. Well, you said yeah. South Carolina, so I, I had to Cholula to is a great <laughs> burrito hot sauce. Yes, mm -hmm. but I thank you so much. I come to Nantucket in September, so I love to go to the Anthony. Oh, that's the best time that's to come. Best, that's the best time. Yes. That's the best. All, all the places are gone. <laughs> <laughs> I can well, find good. a place. Yeah, but thank, thank you so much. I'm going to 
sign off, but All I'll right. see you again. Well, have a good thank night. You. Enjoy. Yeah, thanks thank everyone for joining. Uh, does anyone have any final questions or comments before we wrap up? Yeah. Well, thanks, Thais. Thanks, Daniel. We got, we yeah, got to thanks. Have fun. Thanks for having <laughs> us with our cheesy, awkward jokes. You want some yeah, corn bread? Go viral. Just wait. Some, cor some corny jokes with our cornbread. That's that. I'm going to break some cornbread. Bye, Janet. We got more we can eat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do it. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank All right, you. We enjoyed it. Good. Thank you.